it says it's starting, but I'm sure it's already started. Okay, so I'm just, I just, as you can see, I highlighted it because I read this in our study, in our reading last night, and I read uh, the uh, study part, and, and we were both like, ooh, that's some good stuff, so I got to share this with you. Because I've been to churches, and I've been that person, too, that every time they had, like, altar call, I felt the need to go down there and and not only repent of sins that I committed, because every man sins, we all sin, uh, even a righteous man falls up to seven times a day, right? And I always felt the need to ask to be saved again, over and over and over and over, right? So, in this reading in Leviticus uh, 6, starting at chapter 24, I'm going to read the, the uh, scripture, and I'm also going to read the study part. Let's check this out, check this out. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. Now in the red it says, The personal holiness of Christ is more strikingly presented in the sin offering than in any of the other sacrifices. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. And in the red it says, concerning this, Macintosh says, now just so you'll know, in this study Bible I have, uh, this, uh, Jimmy Swaggart is the author of this particular study Bible, but he also has like four other people, at least. I know of two, uh, let's see, it's uh, Smith, Macintosh, can you remember some of the other names, James, that he uses as references as well? Yeah, well, okay. There's at least two other names that he uses for references in here in this study Bible, so it's not just that one pastor. Okay, but anyways, in this case, Macintosh says, This is most marked and striking. The Holy Spirit did not need to guard with such jealousy the personal holiness of Christ in the burnt offering, but lest the soul should, by any means, lose sight of that holiness while contemplating the place which the Blessed One became the sin offering. We are again and again reminded of it by the words, It is most holy. The same point is observable in the law of the trespass offering, and it refers to Leviticus chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Never was the Lord Jesus more fully seen to be the Holy One of God than when he was made sin upon the cursed tree. The vileness and blackness of that with which he stood identified on the cross only served to show out more clearly that he was most holy. Though a sin bearer, he was sinless. Though enduring the wrath of God, he was the Father's delight. Though deprived of the light of God's countenance, he dwelt in the Father's bosom. As should be obvious, this completely destroys the erroneous doctrine that Jesus died spiritually while on the cross, thus becoming a sinner, etc. The pastors, evangelists, and all of those folks that are part of the Word of Faith movement teach that Jesus died a spiritual death and had to be born again like we will be when we, you know, when, when we, when our bodies die, you know, and then uh, we are reborn a new creature, right? They're try, they try to teach that Jesus died a spiritual death and was reborn and no, no, that's, that's wrong. And it says it right here. The priest who offers it for sin shall eat it. In the holy place shall it be eaten. In the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. God gave the sin offering as food for the priest to bear the iniquity of the congregation and to make atonement for them. And again, it refers to Leviticus 10:17. Once again, we go back to John chapter 6 in the eating of the flesh and the drinking of the blood regarding Christ. The flesh provided by the sin offering constituted a part of the livelihood of the priest as it constitutes 
our spiritual livelihood presently. Ezekiel 44 verses 28 and 29. It was to be eaten in the holy place of the sanctuary. In fact, eight of the offerings, there were others besides the blood sacrifices, had to be eaten in the precincts of the sanctuary. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh, the flesh of the sin offering, thereof shall be holy, in a sense, making this the holiest offering of them all. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, you shall wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. This proclaims to us the preciousness of the blood. But the earthen vessel wherein it, the sin offering, is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it shall be both scoured and rinsed in water. So desperate a malady is sin, a malady is sin, sorry, that anything that came in contact with the sin offering had to be washed, broken, or scoured. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof, it is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood, blood is brought into the tabernacle of the congregation to reconcile with all in the holy place shall be eaten, it shall be burnt in the fire. Concerning this, Williams, that's another person, says, The sin offering whose blood was brought into the sanctuary symbolizes Christ bearing before God the sin of the whole world. The sin offering whose blood was not so brought in, but whose flesh was eaten by the priest, represents Christ as making his own the sins of the individual sinner who believes upon him amen isn't that awesome i love our lord i love our savior and then i want to read this whom we are going to be seeing so soon folks so soon so dealing with israel and ukraine the israeli foreign ministry issued a travel warning to ukraine israelis staying in the country are advised to reconsider their stay and avoid areas of tension Tensions. The foreign ministry also stated that an operation had begun to evacuate the families of the diplomats and emissaries. That was at 11.34 a.m. today. And then, just a few minutes, 15 minutes ago, CNN reports that there is growing speculation among U.S. intelligence officials that Moscow has no plans to wait until the end of the Winter Olympics in Beijing to launch a military offensive against Ukraine. Earlier this morning, Turkish intelligence thwarted Iranian attempt to assassinate Yer Geller, Geller, an Israeli businessman in the military industry, in response for the Israeli's assassination of the father of Iran's nuclear program, Mohsen, and I won't try to pronounce his last name, uh, in November 2020, apart from the assassin, eight people were arrested. And let's see, and there was another one. U.S. Uh, President Joe Biden issued a warning to U.S. citizens who are in Ukraine and told NBC in an interview that they need to leave now. According to the U.S. President, the situation could flare up quickly. No forces will be sent to save Americans who will flee the country if Russia invades there. It is a world war when Americans and Russians start firing at each other. So basically, he's letting them know, leave now, because if the war starts, which could happen any second, which I'm sure they know more than we do, uh, the U.S. will not be trying to save anybody. Yeah. Let's see, there was something else that I received yesterday. I can't remember what it was. I'm looking for it now. Mm. Let's see. Let me find it. Oh, here we go. Uh, no, not his teachings. Where is it? No. Oh, let's see. Where did it go?
Gosh, there's so many notifications from him. Well, I know that, that uh, Russia is doing exercises that could last 10, I think it said 10 days that could easily turn into actual uh, attacks, but I'm trying to find it. Oh, I don't find it now. Doc on it. Okay, so I know that there's reports of Israel strikes in the Damascus area. Uh, it is possible that is Israeli Air Force fighter jets destroyed the battery from which the air defense missiles were launched earlier. Let's see. According to foreign reports, the Israeli Air Force is currently attacking a number of targets in the Damascus area as part of the war between wars. Many explosions are heard in the area and air defense systems have been activated. And exploded in the skies of the country and an alarm was activated in Samaria. Uh, attacking Houthi targets in Sanaa. And so, yeah. <laughs> where it talks about uh, Damascus becoming a ruinous heap and talking about, you know, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, as far as the war of Gog and Magog. And, you know, we've got Syria, we've got Turkey, we've got Lebanon, we've got Russia, we've got China. You know, it talks about all these countries that are coming against Israel. And we know, we know that the U.S. Biden administration is not a friend to Israel. They're against them. They made that plain and clear because they're not doing anything to help them or to even help them to prevent Israel, or I mean, I'm sorry, Iran from uh, making a nuclear weapon because uh, Amir Sarfati just, put, Sarfati just put out just the other day that, you know, originally uh, Iran was probably, you know, they, they were they were basically feeling that they were waiting for the spring months to, to be able to have a nuclear weapon. but. Here we are in February, and, and now Iran, because all the sanctions were lifted or suspended from the Biden administration, from the U.S., uh, Iran is literally days away from having, having a nuclear weapon. And so the U.S. is under threat. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, we, we have to worry about China and North Korea and Russia and Iran, you know, and if you read your word and study your word, U.S. is not talked about in the end times. A lot of people think the U.S. is Babylon. I don't know about all that. I don't know. But I'm just telling you folks, if you've been studying your word, and if you've been studying the end times, and don't be like the Pharisees were when Jesus was here and he was getting on them saying, you hypocrites, you can look at the sky and know what the weather's going to be, but you can't determine the signs of the times, basically because the Messiah was standing right in their face talking to them, and they couldn't even acknowledge that they were talking to the Messiah. They could not even acknowledge Isaiah 53, where it said, you know, that when the Messiah came, that he must suffer these things and die for the people the first time he comes. But the second time he comes, he's coming to make war right and he's going to that's when he's going to become as a a judge but he, he starts with the household of faith don't you know that when jesus comes and the second time and touches his feet on the earth he's going to come to judge the household of faith first that's that's who he's coming against and of course he's going to uh, the the battle of armageddon is going to end with one word from his mouth satan and his little minions do not have a stand a chance satan was defended Lu defeated lucifer was defeated satan those are just titles we don't even know his name but he was defeated over two thousand years ago when jesus said father into your hands i commit my spirit satan lost because he didn't get his soul even though Sa even though our savior paid the price of sin and died the sinner's death even though he was sinless but he paid the price of sin debt for us because he was able to do that because he was God in the flesh Satan did not get him could not get him because he was God he was also the only begotten son of God so Jesus defeated death and he defeated Satan and through him 
we have eternal life if we believe. And I just got another notification from him. Uh, okay, so there's the one that I just read. And it says the United States transfers F-16s from Germany to Romania. And Lot Latvia called its citizens to leave Ukraine. So people, I'm telling you, the thesis is about to hit the fan. You need to make sure that you have your house in order. And when we say your house in order, we're talking about your heart. We're talking about your relationship with the Father, your relationship with Jesus Christ. Do not let Satan lie to you anymore and say you have plenty of time. Folks, there's not any more time. Even if you study what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, where he's talking about the, his second coming. We're so close to even the second coming, it's unreal. Even if you don't believe in the pre-trib, there's so many things that are happening right now that it could even be a mid-trib. It Everything has, it's just falling into place. The, the prophecies of the end times is just literally, literally playing out before us, folks. And I'm telling you, don't let Satan lie to you anymore. People that try to say this was written by man, again, I say, even if it was written by man, then they were prophets because everything they wrote is coming to fruition right now. Read your word. Read about it. Everything that was prophesied in the Old Testament is happening right now as we speak. How would they have known two and four thousand years ago that Syria and Russia and China and Lebanon and Turkey, they were, some of them were called different names. Iran used to be uh, Persia. Uh, uh, and some of them, one of them used to be called Put. One of them, oh gosh, where's my paper? Oh, I just had it. I had it available here a little bit ago that had all those different names that they used to be called back in the biblical days when Jesus walked the earth the different countries I can't find it now but I'll find it and I'll post it but whatever they wrote about all this back then so even if it was just written by man which it was written by a person but it was inspired by God by the Holy Spirit irregardless it's happening and it's exactly as it was said so regardless whether you believe god inspired the writing of this of his word or if it was man then it doesn't matter because what they wrote was going to happen is happening and if you don't have a confession in jesus christ if you do not truly believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that jesus is the only is the only begotten son of god and that he died for our sins and rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God, if you do not have that confession in him, you will not be raptured. You will not have eternal life with the Father. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, there's no heaven, there's no hell. Yes, there is. There is good and there is evil. There is. And I'm telling you, the worst part that, that horrifies me, the worst, the scariest part of nothing else about hell that scares me is the eternal darkness because everything about God is good and light and everything about hell is the opposite of God eternal darkness no light no good evil just pure evil and to be eternally eternally separated from God in itself is enough to make me terrified but the fact that the things that God has done for me in my life and the way he has saved me for myself and delivered me from my drug addictions and delivered me from a flooded, flooded bridge when my son and I should have drowned and he didn't allow that. He made the waters go down and allow us to drive across that bridge. And just two years ago, I think it was, a mother and her son, her baby, drowned on that very same bridge because they got washed off the bridge into the river and drowned but that could have been me but it wasn't because God had plans for my life there's no doubt in my mind that, that God is real and if if God has been talking to you if the Holy Spirit has been talking to you and nudging you don't waste any more time the biggest lie Satan will tell you is you have plenty of time you have plenty of time this uh, these UFOs these aliens that people are starting to all of a sudden it's like a common thing for people to be seeing these strange aircrafts and spacecrafts and strange things 
Do you know why that's becoming commonplace and all of a sudden it's everywhere and it's no big deal and it's normal and all these strange sounds that people are hearing that they can't explain? They're making it become a normal thing in our life because it's part of the deception that's being set up. Because when God sends His Son, when the Father sends the Bridegroom for His Bride, the Church, us, and when we millions disappear in the in the twinkling of an eye, which is one four hundredth of a second, they're going to say that the aliens, which are fallen angels, they are not aliens, they're not alien forms, they're not life from other planets, they are fallen angels. When when they when we disappear, when Jesus comes for his bride and takes us out so the tribulation period can start which is be the, for the salvation of the Jews and the wrath of God is poured out for the unbeliever and for those that rejected the Messiah and pierced the Messiah and for those that will be worshiping the Antichrist thinking he is their Messiah and that's where if the God had not shortened the days if he had not shortened the days no flesh would be saved because two-thirds of the Jews unsadly are going to be killed by him in the in the mid trip you know in the middle of the tribulation when the great tribulation starts and this antichrist turns and shows his true colors that's when they will realize that they were worshiping the wrong person and that that's not their messiah and they will then realize who their true messiah was but by then it'll be too late that's when jesus said when you see the desolation of abomination set in you know flee run don't even look back I'm telling you people we don't have any time Now's the time to get right with Christ. Now's the time to give your life to Jesus. I can't, I cannot, I don't know any other way to put it to, to, to beg you to just cry out to Jesus, just to ask him to show you, to talk to you, to, to let you know he's there, to, to show you that he's real and that he is knocking. Revelation 319, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and let me in, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. And basically that means that he will be in you because our body is God's temple. And it's, it's, he doesn't ask much from us. He just asks us to love him. And if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. And to share the good news with others. We are so out of time. And there's so many people that are losing hope. There's so many people that do not know. That Jesus is our blessed hope. Titus 2.13. Watching for our blessed hope. Time is so short. We're running out of time. And when, when the church is gone. They're going to say. That the, 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 the Christians. And the non-vaxxers. And people like that. Were taken by these aliens to be re-educated we will return in seven years at the end of the wedding week at the end of the tribulation period when jesus comes back for his second coming and every eye will see and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that jesus is lord because they will know who he is we will be with him his saints and his bride will be with him and he'll be bringing the new kingdom with him and when they see him coming then then the Jews will look upon the one whom they pierced and they will know that he is truly their Messiah. Those that are still around. I'm sorry, I just got a notification from someone from my work. Um, but they're going to, do, I, I cannot help but feel they're going to use the alien as a deception to where everyone went when millions of us disappear just like that. And, you know, we figure the age of accountability is around the age of 12, that anyone under that age, children, are not old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. And when God raptures the church, when he takes us, when he harpazos, when he snatches us out of here, because he's not going to make his bride go through the wrath of God. He is not going to make us go through the tribulation period. He's not going to punish those of us that have been faithful in serving him and trusting in him and doing his the father's will we're going to be in the wedding week with the with our bridegroom children under the age of 12 that are not to the age that they know right from wrong are going to go too 
there won't be any children unless they're old enough to say something that blasphemes the Holy Spirit. That is the only unforgivable sin. That is the only unforgivable sin. So for those that are pregnant or nursing or have babies or children under the age of 12, if you do not have a confession in Jesus, if you're not saved, your children will be taken in the rapture. And I, I, my heart breaks for you when that happens because there's going to be a lot of mothers and fathers that are just going to lose their mind. They're going to absolutely lose their mind. And I pray that when that, if, I pray that doesn't happen, but if it does, I pray that you drop to your knees at that moment and that you receive Jesus and that you understand what happened and not curse God. But there's going to be a lot of people when these things start happening on the earth because nothing, nothing have we seen yet is going to be anything compared to what's coming, people. These these disasters, these this terrible weather and these volcanoes and everything that's been going on in, in, in the world that, that's just absolutely mind-blowing is nothing compared to what's going to happen once the tribulation starts. Nothing like the world has ever seen nor will it ever see again. So I'm begging you, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, ask him, ask him, cry out to him, talk to him, get, get some place alone and, and talk to him in your head, talk to him out loud, whatever makes you comfortable, but just do it and he will answer you either through a video, through a text message, through another person, he will, he will answer you. Anyways. We're on lunch, and we actually get a two-hour lunch, and I may take a short nap. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of fired up now, so I may not. But I wanted to share that reading with you, and I want you to know that once you give your life to Jesus and you confess to him, there is no scripture in the Bible for someone to have to read to you a sinner's prayer. Now, repeat this after me, and you will be saved. No. When the Holy Spirit calls you to repentance, and calls you to the altar to repent and to be saved the words you speak to be saved have to come from your heart they have to be your words because you know what you need to have to be repentant of you know what you need to repent of you know that you're a sinner you know that you've sinned you know at that point you know that Jesus has died for our sins and through his blood that was shed on the cross through his blood we can be saved that his blood washes away all sin amen so technically it's, there's no scripture in the bible that someone has to to read or have you repeat after them to be saved so don't think that you that you have to be in the church setting for someone to read you know to say okay repeat after me jesus i know i'm a sinner and i have sinned Please forgive me for my sins. You know, no, no. You don't you do it wherever you are. If the Spirit puts it on your heart, if you're watching this and you feel led to cry out to Jesus and to pray to Him right here, right now, if the Spirit is on you saying, do it now, to start talking to Him like you would your friend, like you would your mom, your dad, to say, Jesus, I know that I can't keep the law. God knew we couldn't keep the law. God knew we couldn't keep the law. And that's why God came to earth and became man. God became flesh. Because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. God became flesh. And he died in our place. He died for us. That's how much God loved us. That he came to earth and he died for us. Yeah, lunch is not over. Stop it. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who was the son of God, who is the son of God, but he was also God in the flesh. And he took all the sins of the world for everybody, not just the Jews, not just the Greeks, not just the Gentiles, everybody, all the sins of the world. He took upon himself and he paid the sin debt in full for the wages of sin is death. If you believe that, 
in your heart and you know as well as God knew that there was no way we could keep the law that we needed the Savior the Jesus came not to do away with the law but to fulfill the law but Jesus said if you love me you will keep my commandments that means that we still have to follow the commandments of God we still have to do not steal thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not murder thou shalt honor your mother and your father thou shalt honor the Sabbath and keep it holy Jesus is our Sabbath he is our rest now um, if you have Jewish blood you may still honor the Sabbath I do at Friday at sunset I honor the Sabbath I start out with prayer and I spend time with God and I study his word and you know whatever you know just do whatever I don't do it like the Jewish families do because I don't know anything about it because I wasn't raised that way um, I, was, I just recently discovered we have like cousins like six six or eight times removed that were born in Israel so you know I don't know anything about growing up to be Israel, you know, Jewish I don't know anything about it but I'm studying it because even if I didn't have that even if we didn't have that the fact that we are grafted in on the tree and we're co-heirs to the throne like Pastor said, it's not such a bad idea to kind of know about our heritage, right? I mean, seeing as our Savior is Jewish, I think it's kind of a good thing to know that stuff, right? Anyways, I've rambled way longer than I meant to. That please don't let Satan lie to you and tell you that you have time because we're really, really out of time. We're really out of time. And don't feel like you have to pray a certain prayer to be saved. It's all from your Heart, your words your words the Spirit will speak to your heart and he'll put on your heart what you need to say you don't have to have someone lead you if you have someone that can tell you what to say that's great but I'm telling you when we pray it's in it's in spirit and in truth right when we ask forgiveness when we pray and ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, to be Master, Lord and Savior over our life, it's from the heart, and it needs to be our own words. If you just repeat what someone else tells you to say, and that's it. To me, that doesn't sound like it's just in spirit and in truth. You need to get alone with God separately and you need to do it from your heart and you need to tell him what you're feeling and what the spirit puts on your heart to say amen i love you jesus loves you he died for you and remember satan hates you and he'll lie to you and he'll do everything he can to try to keep you from serving god and from believing that jesus is the son of god and that he died and rose again and that he's coming back real soon to get his church and his bride. Amen. God bless. Shalom.